Hey all, this is Derek and this is section 4.1. It's going to be about uh, introducing the root functions. And so we'll look at domain, we're going to look at intercepts, and then we're going to do transformations on roots just like we did in the last chapter. So um, there's actually an infinite number of kind of roots because you can have a square root, a cube root, a fourth root, a fifth root, goes on forever. Um, but there are two basic kind of classes. We, so square roots and cube roots, these are going to be our even roots and these are going to be our odd roots. And so for an even root, they have the issue of we can't take um, the square root of a negative because it gets us a, a imaginary number. And so they're going to have domain restrictions. In general, when we're looking at the domain of an even uh, root, it's going to be this x has to be greater than or equal to zero. When this is more complicated, which we'll see in the next section or in the next problems, um, it's whatever is under the radical has to stay greater than or equal to zero because we can't get that negative number. So that is different from our odd roots. With an odd root, it's okay if I have the cube root of negative eight, negative two, negative two, negative two makes negative eight. And so we can have uh, negative values. And likewise, if I have the cube root of eight makes positive two, right? So we're getting positive values. So for this, our domain is going to be all real. And for an even root, it's going to be some sort of limitation dependent upon the, the shift. So let's see what that will look like with a couple examples. So for these two, we're asked to find the domain of the functions. Um, this one is to the fourth. This one is, uh, or the fourth root, and this one's the seventh root. So this is going to be an example of an even root. And this one's going to be an example of an odd root. So for the odd roots, it is super easy because it's all real numbers, so we're done. For the even roots, not as simple. So for the even roots, what we gotta do is um, take this, the argument, and set that to greater than or equal to zero. Because as long as this stays greater than or equal to zero, I have, I'll have a real number. If it goes negative, then that's where I get into the imaginary numbers. So let's kick the nine over. And then we're going to divide both sides by uh, the negative 4. And then you do have to remember when you're doing that, that uh, and that I wrote equals, uh, you do have to remember when you're doing that that this is an inequality, and so dividing by a negative reverses the inequality. So this is going to be x is less than or equal to 9 fourths. And so for here, we would write the domain as um, negative infinity and then up to and including 9 fourths. This next part, we're asked to find the intercepts of the root function. So uh, to find an x-intercept, we just let y equal 0, as always. To find the y-intercept, we let x equal 0, as always. Um, and it is totally possible that it doesn't have um, an x and y-intercept. Not so much the, um, the odd roots will, but the even roots. If you think about like this x squared, if I took this and brought it up here, it would neither cross the x or the y axis. So you can run into examples with this, and you will, um, where it ends up a no solution. So here, if I let um, y equal 0, I end up there. Uh, I'm going to divide both sides by 6, just to get that 6 out of the way. Make it a little bit easier. And then I'm going to square both sides, and I'm squaring to undo that root. And now I can move my 5 over, and then divide out the 3. So my x-intercept is going to be negative 5 thirds and 0. So then to get the y-intercept, we'll do the same thing, but we'll let x equal 0 this time instead of y equals 0. I'm going to write this as y instead of g of x, just so it feels a little more like an intercept. And this would be 3 times 0 plus 5. So it'll just be y equals 6. 3 times 0 is 0, root 5. And then I think um, on the instructions on the problems, it says give this to three decimal places. So if you put that into a calculator, it's going to go 13.416. Uh, and then as an ordered pair, it would be 0 and 13.416. Uh, so for this one, this one's a cube root, and but same process. So we'll do 0 equals cube root of x minus 11. And then to undo the cube root, we will cube both sides. 
and 0 equals x minus 11. Add that over, and 11 equals x. And so that will be our x-intercept, 11 and 0. And then our y-intercept will let x equal 0, so that will be y equals cube root of 0 minus 11. y equals the cube root of negative 11. Remember, that's an odd root, so it's okay to have a negative 11 under there. And again, we're just going to throw that in the calculator. And um, if you're looking on your calculator and you can't find your cube root button, and depending on your calculator, it can be pretty well hidden. The other thing you could type in is negative 11 raised to uh, the one third. And make sure you get parentheses when you do your raised to there. And that will get you the same thing. Um, so this comes out negative 2.224 or zero negative 2.224. Okay, and the next step is uh, transformations of root functions. So the first thing that we need to do is kind of get a hold of what our parent functions look like, our square root and our cube root. We won't do a lot of cube roots because they're hard to draw and there's not that many problems for me to pick from, um, but we will see more square roots. So we should get a parent function for our square root. So let's see what that would look like. Um, y equals square root x. If I were just going to make a table and see, oops, y. <laughs> I was going to put in a zero there in a second. If I was going to make a table, um, I could pick x equals 0, square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 would be 1. I wouldn't do 2 or 3 because those are hard, so I'd pop up to 4, square root of 4 makes 2. And so that right there, that's going to be our parent function um, for all these root problems. So this is where we're always starting from, same, it's like the v that we had for the, uh, the absolute value. And then what we're going to do is the exact same transformations we did in the last chapter with absolute values. Now we're just working with a different picture. So this right here, this is um, a minus 1 on the inside, is going to go right 1. And plus 3 on the outside goes up 3. And then we're just going to take this picture and move it right 1 and up 3. So right one would be right there, and up three gets my new starting point here. And then the way that I do this is I just kind of remember what the shape looks like because I've drawn it a bazillion times, but it's just it's going to go over one, up one, and then over one, up three from there. I think when you do this on the computer, it will, once you get the point and a second point, I think it draws the rest for you, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, this next one we got... Same thing, we're still working on a square root, but this time we're gonna go uh, left two and down four. And so we're always using that the um, parent function, the shape right here. So I'm just gonna take, go left two and then down four. And that puts my new starting point there. It goes over one, up one, and then over one, two, three, up one. So again, all I'm doing is copying the shape. Okay, so still, uh, Still doing square roots, so let me get a parent function in there real quick. And then this one has this three in front, so remember that's going to be a stretch. And that's probably the hardest part of these. So let me do just this much. I'm going to graph um, three root x and just show you the stretch on it. And then once we get the stretch, it's harder when they're curvy because it, it it's harder. Um, then I'll deal with the reflection and then the, the left, right, up, down stuff. So, um, and I think actually the book says to do the um, reflection first. You can do the stretch or the reflection and it'll work either way. So here, we're multiplying this by three. So it used to be when I put in one, I got out one, and now I'm gonna get three times that much. I'm gonna get three. Here it used to be when I put in four, I would get two. Now I'm gonna get three times that much or six. Um, another way of looking at that is with a table, if x is 0, y is 0, right? If x is 1, square root of 1 is 1, but then what happens, it gets multiplied by 3, and that's at 3 times as much as I was talking about. If I put in a 4, square root of 4 is 2, but then multiplied by 3, and there's that 6. So again, it's 3 times as big. Um, once you got that, then it's not too bad. You can just copy that shape wherever you need to go. In this case, we're gonna the minus is on the inside, so it's going to reflect about y, and it's going to shift down 2. So it's going to be here. This used to go over 1, up 3. So it's going to go over 1, up 3. It's just going the other way now because of the reflection. This used to go 3 and then up 3. So I'll go over 3 and up 3. And that gets me to that next point. And 
and then this one has a negative one half in front. So again, I will do the um, the parent function here just so I can show this one's going to be a, a vertical compression. So if I do just the one half root x to show that piece by itself, it's going to cut all these distances in half. And so my um, compressed drum will look like that. So instead of going over one up one, it's only going to go half up. Uh, up a half and at four it used to go to two now it's only going to go to one because it's getting cut in half and what else we need to do there we need to flip it about the x-axis and that minus five is going to shift it uh, left five units so we'll start right here and they're gonna it's gonna open down and that would be right there and so there's my transform Okay, and then this last example is of a cube root. And so let me do the parent function to show that as well. So if I had y equals cube root x, that would be, if I did negative 8, that would make negative 2. I'm picking 8 because it's, it's a perfect cube. I'm picking 1 because it's also a perfect cube. If I put in 0, that would be 0. If I put in 1, that would be 1 again. And if I put in positive 8, that makes positive 2. And so you can kind of see how I'm getting this shape. Negative 8, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 8, 2. Um, so let me copy that kind of here. This is going to be off my page a little bit. So something like that. And then what that two on the inside is going to do is, so that's making it this. So now if I want this to be like a negative eight under there, because that number works well, I would have to put negative four because two times negative four would be negative eight, cube root negative eight makes negative two again. If I want this to come out to one, I have to let X equal, or actually negative one, negative one half. And then that will be negative one, zero, zero. And then same thing, one half of two makes one, cube root of one is one. Putting in a four times two would be eight, cube root eight makes two. So you can see that two is a, um, it's gonna be a horizontal compression. So it goes the opposite direction you're expecting. Uh, so this point moves into four, this point moves into a half. This moves into a half, this moves into negative four. I don't draw these very well, but it's basically, it looks a lot like the black one, but it got kind of squished this way. And then this one half right here, if I have uh, y equals cube root one half x, and I'll just do the inner points on this. Now, if I want this to come out to be a negative one, I'd have to put in a negative two, because half of negative two would be negative one, cube root negative one makes negative one. Half of zero would be zero, and then half of two would be one, cube root one makes one. So that one you can see it's gonna get stretched out, so it's a, a horizontal stretch. So we're going through zero, zero, and then negative two, one, and uh, two, one. Or negative two, negative one, and then two, one. Um, the next good point would be like way out at 16, so I'm not gonna try to draw that. So this is like it's getting stretched along the x-axis.